on your hello everyone and welcome to this video in this video i'm going to be showing you how to set up gpg for win on your windows operating system and basically how to use it uh, for pgp communication so in the, the first section of the course i basically explained what pgp is it's a type of encryption that will allow you to send messages across the internet or even the deep web or the dark net so in this video i'm going to show you how to set up uh, to basically use pgp on the windows operating system so let's get started so what you want to do is you want to open your browser and head over to www.gpg4 for the number win.org all right so once you visit this website the program is free to download just hit download gpg for win uh, the latest version uh, as of this release the latest version is 2.3.3 you can uh, you can you can choose to give a donation of uh, money through paypal but i'm not going to do that right now and basically just hit download so once it's downloaded what you're going to get is this little setup right here all right gpg for win with a little padlock so you want to run this uh, setup and it's a simple uh, setup wizard as you'll see just hit next 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 uh, when you reach this stage make sure that gpa is ticked all right you want to make sure that gpa is ticked you just hit next but i already have it installed so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna install it so once it's done it's going to give you these two icons on your desktop gpa and cleopatra so we're done with the setup let's get rid of that now you want to open gpa all right and it's going to open this command prompt and very very soon uh, later after that is going to open uh, this little window here now yours will not be like this yours will basically show you a a welcome screen where it'll ask you to create your key so let me just delete my current key right now and i'm going to show you the screen that you're going to get so i'm just going to go into key and new key now this is the screen you'll probably get all right so it's going to ask you to generate a key so it's going to ask you for your name so just give in your name your first name or whatever type of name you want to use and just hit forward you then want to enter your email address i'm going to enter mine this is for demonstration purposes again the the uh, type of communication might be different for you so enter your email address once you've entered your email address you can create a backup i'm not going to do that and i don't i don't really think it's important unless you're using this pgp keys for very important communication so i'll do that later and hit forward all right so it's going to say your key is being generated now it's going to ask you for your passphrase now this is the most important thing in this in this basically in pgp is your passphrase you have to remember what your passphrase is and basically your passphrase is supposed to contain letters and numbers so it's supposed to be an alphanumeric uh, key or code so i'm just going to create one again the longer the more secure and it's going to tell you the quality of your passphrase make sure you remember it or i don't recommend writing it down but just keep it safe and do not share this with anyone this is your this is basically what will encrypt all the messages so if someone has this they can basically encrypt all your messages so keep this ultra secure so uh, as you can uh, keep it as um, you can make it as powerful as you want that's fine for me i'm just going to hit okay and it's going to ask you to re-enter the passphrase and i'm going to hit okay and it's going to say uh, it's going to create it now as you can see it's created a key now let me explain something about pgp as i explained in the first uh, in the first section uh, you basically have your public key which i will show you right now if i say uh, if i basically say copy if i copy uh, it that's it's basically copied my public key so let me just show you something right now if i open up um, notepad if i open up notepad and i paste whatever i've copied this is your public key all right it's going to say begin pgp public key block so this is what people will use to communicate with you this is your pgp address or code uh, so to speak so if you wanted to communicate with someone you basically send them this all right now once you've sent them this what they will do for example is let me just show you something right here i'm going to go into the clipboard side and i'm going to type a message they will basically type this message let's say they want to type hello how are you oops excuse me how are you that's the message they want to send you very simple message and they're going to hit encrypt all right now they are basically going to encrypt it with your public key so when they hit encrypt they're going to they're going to paste your public key we already have the public key entered right here so we're just going to select it and we're going to hit okay all right 
Now, once they've encrypted it with your public key, they're going to get this uh, PGP message. This is the basic PGP message. So this is the encrypted PGP message. So they will send you this message. All right. So now, uh, once they've sent you this message, you basically have to decrypt it and you decrypt it using your passphrase. As I said, you have to remember your passphrase. So I'm going to enter my passphrase and let's see whether it actually gives us the message. And voila, it's going to say, hello, how are you? So basically how PGP works, I'm going to explain this again, is you, you have your, your public key, all right, which will be generated. And then you send this to the person you want to communicate with. All right. Now they, uh, in turn will basically, excuse me, in turn will basically write a message and encrypt that message with your public key. All right. So let's say they say, hi, this is a test. All right. And they're going to encrypt it with your public key. So they're going to use the, probably the same program if they're running it on Windows. I'm going to show you how to do this on Linux in the next video. So they're going to open and they're going to encrypt it with your key. So they'll add the key from here or they can basically paste your, your public key and hit OK. Now it's going to give them the PGP message. All right. So this is the PGP message, which in essence is basically the message in encrypted format. So they will basically copy this and send it to you. Now you once you receive this, all you have to do is hit decrypt and you uh, and enter your passphrase and voila, you will have the message there. So that's basically how PGP works and how to set up a GPG for win on a Windows operating system. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the Hello everyone, welcome to this section of the course. In this section, we're going to get started with creating and hosting your own deep web or onion website. So basically, in a nutshell, I'm going to be showing you how to create and host your own deep web website. So uh, what I'm going to be doing in this video is ju just showing you the process. Uh, we're going to be using Linux, uh, more specifically Ubuntu. You can use any other Linux distro you want. And that's what I would recommend because it's easier and manageable instead of using Windows. You could do it with Windows, but I'm not going to go into that because it's a really, really tedious process. And again, you're basically going to be turning your computer into a, a server and you don't want it to be running Windows. Trust me. So I'm going to be using Ubuntu. I'm running this on my uh, Ubuntu machine right now. So uh, let me just open up a terminal. This is how we get started. So open up a terminal and you want to enter root. All right. So I'm going to enter root right now. So that's sudo bash. I'm going to enter my password. All right. If you guys have a password, enter it and it should grant you root access. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to install the Tor unit. All right. The unit package for Linux. So apt, not the browser, the Tor unit package apt get install Tor. All right. And it's going to ask you to install it. And uh, if once it's installed, uh, it's going to just complete. I've already have it installed, so I don't need to go through that. So once that's done, uh, we're going to have to browse through uh, to a few directories here. So uh, what you want to do is you want to, uh, if you guys are not familiar with the Linux command line, just follow me along. It's the same process. But for those of you who are accustomed to how the the Linux terminal works, uh, you will get the idea. So we're going to change the directory to CD uh, and to the Etsy or ETC folder. And it's going to open that. And uh, let me just list the directories. All right. So um, we're going to then move into the CD. Um, CD Tor, I believe. If you have installed Tor, this folder should exist. All right. So there it is. You then want to use um, a text editor to edit the the Tor C, the Tor C folder. Uh, file right here. So I'm going to use gedit. If you're running Linux, uh, this should come pre-installed on, uh, on Ubuntu. If you're using uh, Kali Linux, use the leaf pad, or if you want to do it through the terminal, you can use nano, uh, the nano or dvim editor. So uh, what we're going to get started with is gedit, um, gedit tor c. This is the file we want to edit right here and add something there. So I'm just going to open that up and it's going to open up uh, that file uh, in this nice document folder. Now, as you can see, you want to scroll all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, and you want to enter these two lines here. So I'm going to get rid of them and uh, I'll show you. Whoops, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these two lines. Let me get rid of them. 
all right so uh, basically what we have to get started with uh, now to what we have to enter in now is the following all right so we have to uh, just follow fo follow along as i type right so you want to type in let me let me just see if i can uh, uh, let me just say hidden all right so make sure you, that you don't leave a hash before because we want to actually activate these commands so just just copy what i'm doing hidden uh, service uh, directory just the way i've punctuated it uh, var we want to store this in the var um, var library tor uh, and the oops tor hidden um, tor hidden underscore service All right so once that line is done we can now go to the next line and we want to type in hidden uh, service port all right hidden service port 80 because that's the default 80 for those of you uh, accustomed to networking you'll understand this you now want to get your ip address all right now i'll explain something about this so just open your terminal another terminal if you can and just type in ifconfig if you're using linux right ifconfig this will work on any linux distro and uh, you want to go to the your current network adapter and if you want to go to the inet uh, section right here and you want to just copy this this is will be your public i mean your private um your local ip address I'll, in order for you to host this uh, to the whole entire planet meaning globally share this website and host it through your machine you'll basically give it your real ip address or set up a server but uh, to demonstrate i'm just going to be using my local ip address so that's that's the one there so i'm just going to copy it so after the 80 give a space and paste that there all right you then want to enter colon and 80 uh, sorry 80 again all right so once that's done uh, those are the two lines that we needed to enter so let's just save that right so once that's saved close this file and we can open up the terminals again uh, where we were working all right so let's clear that now we want to start the tor service all right so this is why i said we need to install the tor unit so the to install the tor service uh, we just want to hit service again for those of you who are accustomed to the linux command line you'll know how to start these stuff so service tor start all right and it's going to start the tor service if you install it next what we want to do is we need to install apache 2 uh, apache 2 is a live server for those again of you who are accustomed to web development will understand what apache is for just creates a local host where you can access your website and edit it etc etc so to do that you just want to hit apt install apache 2 all right and as you can see i already have it installed but yours if it's not installed it's going to install it for you and uh, you you're basically ready to go so next thing you want to do is hit service apache 2 and we want to start it all right there we are so that started and now now what we can do is we need to go we need to browse uh, into our uh, into the folders that we have set so to do that i'm gonna just hit nautilus nautilus is a root file browser or file explorer so i'm just gonna open nautilus all right and it's gonna open my file uh, explorer so i'm gonna go into the hard drive where ubuntu is installed and um, you want to go to this directory so you want to go into var all right var library uh tor you want to go into tor so this should be down here tor and you want to go into hidden service and the host name all right your host name is basically your deep web uh, link your onion website link so just leave that open and now we can go back go all the way back to your hard drive and you want to go into var all right and uh, www and your html so this is your apache folder and this index.html is your actual website source code so let's say we wanted to create a test website i'm going to open a, a text editor i'm going to be using atom because i am also a web developer so if you guys are, are obviously accustomed to web development this should be no surprise for you so let's create a new file and uh, let me just save this as uh, i'm going to save it on my desktop as index it's going to be a very simple website index.html i'm going to save that right and uh, let, let's just get 
uh, let me just enter the syntax. All right, so there we are. I'm just going to call it uh, test deep web. Whoops. Site. This is the that's the title of the website. In the body, I'm just going to create a container, uh, div container, and let's call this welcome to the website um, we're not using bootstrap so i really can't style it uh, much more than that but this is just a simple website we can give it some simple styling some in um, internal styling style is equals to uh, color let's say red you guys don't have to do this because when you'll be creating your own website it's all up to you I'm just basically creating a text website uh, html file so we can actually i can just show you that it works so we're basically going to say welcome to the website and um, this this um, site was created um, for the deep web all right so i'm going to i'm going to save this and we can exit now now we're going to get rid of this index.html i'm going to move it to the trash and we're going to move in uh, the one we've just created which is in the var ww and html folder so i'm going to copy it in there so once that's done, we are we are almost getting to where we wanted to get. Next thing we need to you need to download uh, the Tor browser, the actual Tor browser as I showed you guys. So basically, what you want to do is just open up your browser and uh, search for Tor. Uh, Tor, simple as that, and uh, it's going to take you to the website right here. Just click on that website and just hit download and again you can just select um, your your architecture right here we're using linux for this so download the linux version and now i'm going to open my file explorer um, right here i'm going to go to my downloads i already have the tor browser extracted so all i have to do is just hit tor browser and hopefully it should start the tor browser and we can we can basically paste the link uh, to our website which hopefully should be running because of the apache so let the Tor browser start up. There we are. Now I'm going to just copy the link that belongs to our website. Let's copy this and let's paste this and go. And hopefully if it worked through the ports and the Apache, we should get there. We are. So they welcome to this website. This website was created by the deep web. And if you see, we can basically, this is what we wrote and that's the, the basic web page. So as you can see, this is an onion website and uh, this is the basic website. Really, really very simple and uh, meaningless website, but you guys get the idea. This is just showing you how to go about setting the environment up and uh, basically creating um, a test website and uh, how to basically set up Apache. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Um, it's not really that complicated, but uh, as, as you can see, it's totally worth it and it does work. So if you guys have any questions at all about uh, anything that we've done in this uh, in this section just let me know